to all! Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Math Room by Teacher Joanne. We are going to have another lesson in general mathematics. Since we have already discussed what functions are and various topics related to functions in the previous videos, now let us have its applications. So the topic in this video is all about real-life situations involving functions. The examples that you will see here are some of the common applications of functions in the real world. So let's start. The learning objectives of this lesson are the following. You should be able to represent real-life situations using functions and solve problems involving functions. Also, I hope you will be able to appreciate more the importance of studying functions at the end of this video. The essential question that needs to be answered in this video is, what are some of the real-life applications of functions? But before we have the sample applications, let us discuss first what you need to know about functions. Functions often used to model real-life situations. A function model is used to show the relationship between two or more quantities. In everyday life, Many quantities depend on one or more variables. Let us have some examples. Water bill depends on water consumption. Speed is a function of time and distance traveled. Revenue is based on the price and the number of products sold. So let us now have some applications of functions. Function can be applied in business. Let us discuss cost, revenue, and profit functions. These three concepts use the idea of a linear function. What is a cost function? Total cost refers to the expenses for the production of a product. And in a total cost, it contains two. We have the variable cost and the fixed cost. When we say variable cost, it is an expense of producing or making one product. This cost depends on the quantity produced and varies depending on the volume of the production. It includes expenses on the raw materials, direct labor, and etc. While fixed cost refers to the expense that remain the same no matter how much product is manufactured or sold. This cost does not change with the quantity in production process. It includes expenses for rent, utilities, and wages of employees, loan payments, and a lot more. This value remains the same no matter how much product is manufactured or sold. And for its formula or function, we have C of x is equal to variable cost times x, where x refers to the number of products plus f. As for the revenue function, we have the total revenue. It is the amount received for the sale of goods or payments for the services rendered. So to get the revenue, we will just have the product of the price per unit times the number of units. Profit function. In profit function, we have the total profit. It is the money earned after paying the cost of producing and selling products or services. And to get the profit function, we will just have revenue function minus the cost function. R of x minus C of x. With this, let us now apply the three concepts. First example, the PSD Senior High School Honor Society is trying to raise funds for their outreach activity by selling chocolate cupcakes to their co-senior high school students. The cost to make each cupcake is 12 pesos and is being sold for 25 pesos. The club has already spent 793 pesos in paying for the use of utilities. With this given problem, let us first list down all the given values. It says in the problem that the cost to make one cupcake is 12 pesos. With this, it gives us the variable cost. Next, we have 25 pesos 
it says here the cupcake is being sold for 25 so that gives us the price of the cupcake. Last value, we have 793 pesos. It says here it is used for the paying for the use of utilities, which is the fixed cost. With all of these values, we can now answer letter A. What is the cost function? Based in our discussion a while ago, when we say cost function, it is given by C of X is equal to VX plus F. The X here stands for the unit of a product, which is the cupcake. So we'll just simply retain it. So we have C of X is equal to the V, which is 12, 12X 12 plus the F, 793. With this, we have the cost function. C of X is equal to 12X plus 793. Second question, what is the revenue function? Based in the discussion, the revenue function is given by R of X is equal to the price of the product times X. So based in our given, the price is 25. Therefore, we have R of X is equal to 25X. So this is now the revenue function. Third question, what is the profit function? To get this, we need the concepts of revenue and cost functions. Since profit function is given by P of X is equal to R of X minus C of X. So we have to substitute the functions that we answered a while ago. So we have 25X for the revenue minus for cost we have 12X plus 793. Keep in mind that we need to put a parenthesis for the second function. Since it is a binomial, so meaning we have to distribute the negative sign to each term. Without putting a parenthesis, you might have a different answer, and that is wrong. So we have 25x minus 12x minus 793. Simplify by combining these two, we have 13x minus 793, which gives us the profit function. Fourth question, how much is the total profit if 60 cupcakes were sold? Since we are being asked to find the total profit, we will be using the profit function here. In the previous item, we have the profit function P of X is equal to 13X minus 793. So since it says in the question 60 cupcakes were sold, we need to let X be 60. So we have P of 60 is equal to 13 times 60 minus 793. Multiplying these two, we have 780 minus 793, which gives us a value of negative 13. Since the answer is negative, it means to say that there is a loss of 13 pesos if you will just going to sell 60 cupcakes. Again, there is a loss of 13 pesos in selling 60 cupcakes. That's the meaning of the negative here. So it means to say that you should be able to sell more than 60 pieces of cupcakes in order for you not to have a loss but a profit. Next, how much is the total cost if 150 cupcakes were sold? Here we are being asked for the total cost, therefore we have to use the cost function. So we have C of X is equal to 12X to 793. Since we're talking about 150 cupcakes, let x be 150. So we need to substitute 150 to x. Afterwards, multiply 12 and 150, and the answer is 1,800 plus 793 gives us 2,593. 
So the meaning of this is that the total cost is 2,593 if 150 cupcakes were sold. Letter F, how many cupcakes must be made and sold to break even? Here, when we say break even, it means to say that there is no profit, no loss. So with that, we have to let P of X be 0. By letting P of X be 0, we can now find the number of cupcakes that has to be made and sold for us to have break even. Meaning, you did not earn but you did not lose anything. So using P of X is equal to 13X minus 793. Substitute 0 to P of X. Then afterwards, we have to solve for X. Here, we can transpose the negative 793. So it will become positive 793 is equal to 13X. Divide both sides by 13. We have an answer of X equals 61. So what's the meaning of this? 61 cupcakes must be sold. To break even. Other functions. There are some real life situations that can be modeled and solved using the other functions. Let us have some examples. First, the height in feet of a golf ball hit into the air is given by the function h of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 64 t, where t is the number of seconds elapsed since the ball was hit. And the question here is, how long does it take for the ball to hit the ground? So since we're talking about the time, we let t be unknown. Next, let h of t represents the height of the golf ball thrown into the air as a function of the time t for the ball to hit the ground. Since we are looking for the time for the ball to hit the ground, we let h of t be zero, meaning the height of the ball when it's already on the ground is 0. So using the function given in the problem, we have 0 is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 64 t. To solve for this, as you can see in this binomial, they have common factor. And their common factor is negative 16 t. So we have 0 is equal to negative 16 t times when we divide negative 16 t squared by negative 16 t, we have t. 64 t divided by negative 16 t, we have minus 4. What we are doing here is factoring by common monomial. Next, let each factor be equal to 0. So first, we have negative 16 t is equal to 0. Divide both sides by negative 16. The first value of t is 0. Second, we have t minus 4 equals 0. So we have t equals 4. So as you can see, we have two values, t equals 0 and t equals 4. Since we cannot accept 0 second for the ball to hit the ground after throwing into the air, we will consider as an answer t equals 4, meaning it will take 4 seconds for the ball to hit the ground. Next example, we have the velocity in meters per second of a free falling object as a function of the height m from which it is dropped is given by v of h is equal to the square root of 9.8 times 2 times h. The question here is, ignoring the air resistance, at what height should you drop a watermelon if you want it to hit the ground at 100 meters per second? Here, based on the problem, we are looking for the value of h. So the 100 meter per second is the value of the velocity. Now, we will just simply substitute the given value to our function. So we have 100, which is the v of h, is equal to the square root of 9.8 times 2 times h. Here, let us first uh, remove the radical sign 
by getting the squared of both sides. Hundred squared gives us ten thousand equals we can now remove the radical sign nine point eight times two times h gives us nineteen point six h. Divide both sides by nineteen point six to get the value of h. So h here is equivalent to five hundred ten point twenty meters. So it means to say that the watermelon must be dropped at 510.20 meters to hit the ground at 100 meter per second. As you have seen, functions are used in numerous real life situations. Hence, it is indeed important to be given an attention. I hope you were able to follow every single problem. Now it is your turn to do practice exercises. You may pause the video to answer the given problem. Let us check our work. For letter A, we have C of x is equal to 30x plus 6,000. Letter B, R of x is equal to 60x. Letter C, P of x is equal to 30x minus 6,000. And letter D, we have P of 500 is equal to 9,000. Always remember that functions are used to show the relationship between two quantities. It has a wide range of applications in real-life situations. So I hope you have learned a lot and you understood how important functions are not just in math but in the real world. So thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you in the second part of this lesson. Again, if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to be updated. Bye everyone and have a nice day.